Welcome back. This is the first video of this series about SQL and Docker. In the first video we talked about Docker, in the second video we used Docker to run Postgres. We also took a look at the dataset we are going to use throughout the course. This is a New York Taxi Trips dataset. So we took a look at this and then we wrote a script for inserting this data to our database that we're running locally with Docker. At the end of the previous video I brought this script for inserting chunks of data to our database and it finished executing and then I said at the end it will throw an exception saying that there are no records anymore, I cannot return the next thing, that's why it exited this loop. I'm not proud of this code but it works. So now let's check if we have all the data we need in our table. Indeed we have all the data we want. We can explore the data a little bit. For example, we can see what is the earliest pickup time in our database. It's actually latest, so for earliest will be min. Then we can also look, for example, what is the maximum amount of money passengers needed to spend on trips. For example, this total amount. So we do this select from the yellow taxi data. We'll go through the entire data set and we'll find answers for this query. And we see that the minimum number, I don't know, maybe it's some mistake in the data. The earliest pickup time is from 2008. I think it's a mistake. Then the latest one is from February. Could be a mistake as well. I don't know. And then the largest amount of money a passenger needed to pay was $7,000. I don't know. Did they travel to Miami or what? But yeah, that's quite a lot. Maybe it was a trip to Miami on a limousine. Uh, maybe it could be possible that this is just an error in the data as well. Yeah, we can do all kind of things here in these two PGCLI, but you see that this is not super convenient. This is more a command line interface for quickly taking a look at the data, but it's not super convenient to actually write queries here. And there is a more convenient tool. This is a desktop application, or it's actually now it's a web application called pgadmin. If I look it up, pgadmin. Yeah, so this is a Postgre tool. It's a web-based GUI tool to interact with the Postgres database, which is exactly what we need. It's more convenient than uh, using CLI. We can uh, write queries there and then we can see the results in an actual table, not, not this kind of table, but an actual table. So this is a more convenient tool for interacting with Postgres. This is a web-based GUI tool and to be able to run it, of course, we can install it. But since we already have Docker, we don't need to install it. We can just pull an image, a Docker image that contains the tool, and we can just use that. To do this, we can do pgadmin docker, and it will bring us to the official website, and it will say that it's actually, if you go to pgadmin and then there's this download thing, you will see that uh, one of the options is uh, this container. And this is exactly the page that uh, Google showed in the first row for me. It says see instructions on Docker Hub for information on running this container. So the instructions isn't really super helpful here, but at least we know the name. This is the image we need to use to run pgadmin. Let me copy it. The command will be docker run again minus it and then we will need to have a bunch of uh, arguments here to specify uh, you know, password and so on. So it it doesn't show actually what kind of environment variables are needed. I have my notes here, I can just take a look. I might as well just copy the whole thing and explain what it's doing. So let me just do that. This is the command we need to execute to run pgadmin in Docker. We have two parameters here, pgadmin default email. So this is the username that we will use for logging into the interface. And then the second thing is the password we will use for logging into pgadmin. And then the third thing is port mapping. So we map a port on our host machine, port 8080 to your port number 80 on the container. pgadmin is running, is listening for requests on port 80 and uh, we will map this port to our host machine port 8080 and all the requests we will send to port 8080 will be forwarded to port 80 on the container. So let's run that. So I will stop this thing and run this thing. Um, I think it started. It says listening at this port. Let's open our browser and let's navigate to localhost 8080. And now we have uh, pgadmin. So the email we used was this one, admin at admin, admin. And the password was root. So let's use that to log into this interface. This is the web interface of pgadmin. And now we need to create a new server. So we just do 
right click create server and we need to specify a name local docker and now in the connection we need to specify the host address previously here we wrote localhost root so now i click save and it says unable to connect to server localhost and the reason for that is we are running this thing inside a container and localhost inside the container means that this is this container it tries to find postgres in this container of course it doesn't find because we do not have postgres in this container it's running in a different container so now we have a problem so how do we actually connect this thing to be able to connect it we need to somehow link the two we need to link the database and this pg admin and we can do this by using network so we can put both the containers let's say this is one container and we can put them in one network right so they will be in one network where they will be able to see each other and from pg admin we'll be able to connect to postgres but for that we use networks let me stop actually this thing do Control c it stops i will also need to stop this container with postgres and now let me look it up how to do this docker network create this is exactly what we need let's start with this so first we need to create a network so the network let me call it pg network okay now we have a network when we run postgres now we need to say that this container should be run in this network so let me copy this thing so I'll call it uh, network and we need to specify if we go if we scroll down we have example so we need to use this uh, network and the name of the network so the network in our case will be let me copy this command as well so the network in this case will be pg network and we also need to specify the name this name will be how uh, pg admin will be able to discover postgres so I'll call it pg database and we need to run these two things so let me execute that let me quickly make sure that we actually we still have the data because we stopped the container and started again we use mounting for making sure that the data is preserved between runs but let's check that uh, actually everything is there i think it's yellow taxi data okay good we still have all the data this is a good sign and now we need to run pg admin in the same network so we also need to specify network and name name maybe is less important here but let's specify it the name is important for postgres because this is how we'll, pg admin will use will know how to connect to postgres but nobody needs to connect to pg admin so we don't need that really but let me do it anyways and i will exit this and run our pg admin i don't know why there is another container with this name doesn't seem that it's running but i'll just do pg admin too it has started so let us go to pg admin i think we need to reload it so we'll use this email and password as root now let's do again right click create server then it will be docker local host and then connection will be it will actually be this pg database so this is the name we used for postgres database and now we can refer to this as host name and this way pg admin will know how to find postgres then username will be root and then password is also root so now let's save it and we were able to connect so now let's do let's see what is here so we have databases this is our database new york taxi in this taxi i think we need to go to schemas and then select tables we have this yellow taxi data and we can see so for example we can see what are the first 100 rows we just do view edit data first 100 rows and then it creates this uh, tab here it puts already a query select star from this uh, why it needs public and uh, doesn't seem like it's editable it uh, puts this query there and it shows the results here so we see that uh, this is what it returns so let us open this query tool here we can write any anything we want so for example select count one from 
more database yellow taxi data and it will give us the number of records um, so this is how we use to jetmin uh, this is how we connect to jetmin with postgres uh, using networks so in the next video i want to talk to you about docker compose and i want to show you how we can instead of uh, running this in uh, two terminals i want to show you how we can put this into one yaml file these two containers and just run it with one command from one terminal so that's all for this lesson and see you soon